Hey guys, Sebastian here with another Cardano video. This time we're going over the uh, Yellow Testnet and how to deploy a contract uh, to the Yellow Testnet through the Remix ID. Uh, so before we get into it, let's go through a bit of history, uh, which is to say, what is Yella? Uh, so Yella is essentially uh, kind of V2 of the EVM. And the reason I say that is because uh, uh, IOHK worked in cooperation uh, with Runtime Verification, which is a company based out of University of Illinois, uh, to first do a formal verification of the EVM. And as they did that, they found a bunch of things that could be improved, uh, could be more secure and all this kind of stuff. Uh, take all the lessons learned from the EVM and make a uh, new and better virtual machine. Uh, and that's what Yella is. And so Yella has been uh, created in partnership with uh, Runtime Verification and now runs in a testnet uh, that's available for anybody in the public. Uh, this testnet uh, runs Yella, which does not run uh, the same version of Solidity as you would usually run uh, inside uh, the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. Uh, and the reason for that is because actually the uh, bytecode is different uh, since we don't use the EVM bytecode. And so therefore, Solidity, although it is compatible, it will require some small changes. Uh, we'll not go uh, into that into this video. Uh, you can read more about that on the GitHub. Uh, but I'll kind of show you guys how to uh, write and deploy a smart contract uh, on uh, Remix. So Remix uh, is a IDE uh, created by the Ethereum Foundation, uh, basically to be able to create and deploy uh, Solidity smart contracts inside your browser. So what happened is that uh, IOHK uh, forked uh, the Remix ID and essentially made a version that instead of connecting to the EVM, uh, connects to Yella. So actually if you click on this uh, details uh, button, you can see that our Solidity code uh, that we were looking at previously uh, actually compiles down to this Yella assembly as opposed to the EVM bytecode, uh, which is much more human readable uh, than we'd expect from the bytecode. If you've ever seen EVM bytecode, it just reads like a bunch of like uh, nonsensical instructions. Uh, so this is much more human readable, especially if you're familiar with the uh, ARM assembly. So uh, now that we have a smart contract, a uh, default smart contract, uh, by the way, if you're interested in trying this out yourself, uh, the link will be in the description of this video. So you can like open up the ID and do this yourself. Uh, but so, so now we've got our smart contract. Uh, let's go into the run tab. In the runtime, we create our account. Uh, so the account is essentially used to keep track of your uh, the history of the smart contracts, smart contracts you deployed to the platform. Uh, all you need is a password. You don't practically have, <coughs> sorry, have to remember this password. Uh, but if you want to keep your history, uh, be sure to keep it in mind. Uh, so now we've uh, typed in our password. Uh, we've pressed OK on the dialog box, and we give it a few seconds to uh, generate our address on the test network. Uh, so once we've uh, generated our account, uh, you can see we have zero ether inside our account. If you're wondering why uh, ether is showing up, it's because uh, to dis create this testnet, it was easiest to uh, base this off a custom version of Ethereum Classic. Uh, however, in the future, uh, that will be all moved to Cardano. And so what happens basically, uh, you can think of uh, yellow as being uh, the virtual machine, and then we have an abstraction layer, and then there's uh, blockchain, right? And so in this case, it's ETC. Uh, but in the future, we would switch ETC with Cardano, but the abstraction layer would stay the same. Uh, but until then, basically, uh, things are remaining in Ether. Uh, so now we press the get funds button to call the faucet and uh, load up some uh, test uh, Ether into our account that we can then use to the uh, deploy our contract. Uh, now we've uh, gotten some small amount of funds, uh, we can uh, simply uh, compile uh, on this tab. And then once we've compiled, uh, you can see you can select our contract here and deploy it to the yellow VM. Okay, once we press deploy to the yellow VM, uh, we'll get a dialog box uh, that asks us how much we want to put for the gas price along with the data we're uploading to the blockchain, which this is our contract. So if we uh, confirm, uh, you'll see we'll be creating a transaction uh, that uploads our smart contract uh, to the EVM, or sorry, the Yellow testnet, 
and then you can now see our contract was deployed successfully uh, see it says success right here and you can see uh, on the right hand side we get a list of functions uh, that we can call uh, and so if you press the uh, blue buttons uh, as long as you've got uh, let's see once it's easy to do all right not equal so if you do like a true true uh, some string uh, then you should be able to click this button and you'll get a dialog box that essentially pops up and asks you if you want to call this function on the uh, test uh, net. So basically you'll create a transaction on the blockchain that says I'm calling this smart contract, calling this function. And so this is how you would uh, call your functions uh, on the test net. Okay, and so uh, this is basically all there is to it. Fairly simple. If you want to load contract run by somebody else, you can put the uh, address in here. Uh, but this is so how you would uh, deploy your Solidity Smart Contract. Uh, let's take it a, a step further uh, now that we're at it. And instead of uh, writing Solidity that uh, compiles down to Yella, uh, we can press the uh, plus button on the top left and then uh, create a new file and just call it uh, test.yella or something of the sort. And now we can write a Yella Smart Contract uh, directly without uh, having to go through Solidity at all. Uh, this is not particularly recommended as uh, these uh, contracts uh, get kind of tedious to write for anything that's a large application. Uh, but for anything fairly small, we can do this easily. So let's look at this example right here, which is a smart contract uh, that uh, calculates the factorial for us. So let's copy paste that into our IDE and kind of digest uh, what this contract does. So we have uh, first an init function. This is a constructor for our smart contract. And then this constructor uh, does nothing, right? And then in our con smart contract, we have one, one function uh, called factorial, and it takes an argument, which is the uh, n, right? Uh, we look and compare if n is less than zero, and if so, we throw an exception, uh, which is represented by yellow.invalid. Uh, otherwise, we start with uh, the value one as our base case, and we check our condition. Our condition checks if uh, our counter n is smaller than zero. Uh, if so, we skip to after loop or we just return the result. Uh, otherwise, we enter the loop body and the loop body, we take a result and multiply it uh, by n. Uh, once we're done that, uh, we subtract n uh, by one and uh, branch back to our condition. So this is fairly uh, simple implementation of a factorial. And let's try to compile it. So we just press the start compile button. You can see it compiles successfully with no errors. Uh, we go into our run tab, and here you can see the factorial smart contract. Uh, we press deploy to yellow VM. We wait a few seconds for the uh, dialog to come up, and now we can uh, deploy our smart contract. Now we've got our smart contract deployed onto the test network, and we have actually two options now. Uh, keep in mind the blue button uh, means uh, create a transaction on the test network uh, where we'll actually uh, make a transaction recorded in the blockchain that we call the factorial uh, function and see the answer. The green button on the other hand is uh, basically call this function directly in your browser uh, but don't actually go through the blockchain and you can use this to kind of simulate uh, what a function would do. Uh, so let's try it uh, doing factorial 5 and pressing that and we can see the answer is 0x78 uh, uh, which is uh, base 16 encoding. Uh, and so this, this is basically how you would uh, write your smart contract on the uh, Yella VM, either through Solidity or directly doing it through Yella. If you're more, if you're interested in more information, uh, obviously you can check out the Yella Semantics uh, GitHub repo, uh, where we show uh, how Yella works, uh, which is you know defined in all these uh, readme files uh, quite extensively. So if you're interested, you can uh, learn a lot about the platform. Uh, we also have a lot of documentation about Yella and what it is and how it works on the IOHK testnet website. Uh, so these links will be in the description of the video. And then we actually have, if you go down uh, below, uh, we have a uh, Riot and a Gitter chat room uh, that people can join in and ask questions about Yella. So I'll be in that chat room uh, willing to answer any and all questions that people may have. I'm really excited about this platform. Uh, Merco is really excited about this platform. We're going to be building a lot of stuff onto it, improving the developer ecosystem. 
Uh, and so if you're uh, willing to uh, help us build this ecosystem, I'd love to have you on board. Thank you.